If you'd like to code along with this demonstration, check out the GitHub link in the video description. Click on that link, it'll take you to where you can download the starting source code, as well as the setup instructions to get your environment up and running. So what we're gonna do now is take a look at how we can build an asynchronous validator. It's gonna be a validator that connects into the reactive form system of Angular, and when it actually comes time to validate the actual uh, input field, instead of just simply checking the value and doing something locally, we're gonna make a call out to a REST service and actually validate with some data on the server. For our REST service, we're gonna be using JSON server to be powering our REST operations. And all we're gonna do is build a little input field that has a place for us to type in a color name. And then we're gonna validate whether or not that color name is a valid color um, up in our REST service. So here's our app component TS file. You can see where we have a color name form control. We're also injecting the HTTP client. I've already imported the necessary modules over an app module to kind of make all this work. Over here for app component HTML, we've got our label for color name, our actual input field bound to um, our color name property on our component class. Also here we have a little span tag telling us when we have an invalid color name. To show and hide this span, we have some CSS set up here where we'll be checking for ng invalid on the input field. And if it is set to ng invalid, then we'll go ahead and show that span element. Otherwise, the span will be hidden with display none. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to put this validator together. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create a function for our validator. Ordinarily, this would go in a separate file, but we'll keep it all here in this one particular file just for the sake of the demonstration. So we're gonna say const color name async validator. There we go. And then um, for this validator, we are going to need access to the HTTP client. So what we're really gonna do is create a function that ultimately really returns the validator function. So we have access to that HTTP client for making the calls to the actual REST service. So we'll say HTTP client colon HTTP client. There we go. And then here we're gonna actually use our form control to do our validation. There we go. Great. Okay, so now we have a function that returns a function and then that function that's being returned is the actual validator. Now before we actually go and implement all the details of the validator, the first thing I'd like to do is actually take this validator and go ahead and register it with our form control here. Now the first value to the form control constructor is the initial value of color name, which we're gonna to set to a blank. The second argument is going to be um, synchronous validators. So validators that don't have any promises or observables. We don't actually have any of those for this, so we're gonna set that to null. Then we're gonna set up an array where we can actually pass in our asynchronous validators. So we're gonna actually call our function passing in this .http client. There we go. So now we've got our asynchronous validator here and this will return back the actual validator function which will then be added to the array. We have to set it up like this so we can make that, that HTTP client service available inside of this function. Okay, so let's go ahead and get busy coding this up. First thing is we don't wanna do any validation if there's no actual input in the field. So we'll just come into here and say if not C, so let's say for example, um, there's nothing actually, there's no actual input field or anything like that. We're just gonna ignore it. Or string c.value, so we're gonna convert that to a string, length equal to zero. If either of those are true, we'll just go ahead and say return of null. Now the reason we have to wrap this in the of is we're basically going to, um, we're gonna to have to return back an observable. So up here at the top, we've already pulled in our of. And of just allows you to take any value and wrap it up as an observable, and the value that you pass into it will be the actual result of the observable. So there's our null. Next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make our REST service call. So we'll say return this.http client dot get, and then we'll come into here, HTTP localhost, 4250, which is where our REST service is running, colors, question mark, name, equal, 
and then we're gonna say plus string C dot value. So we're actually gonna make our REST service request um, using the value from the input field to see if we can find a name. Now the way this will work is it'll actually return back an array. So it'll either return an empty array if there's nothing found or an array of colors that might match that particular name. So now we'll go ahead and say dot pipe. And then we're gonna use the map operator here and we'll say colors any, which is gonna be an array. Great, and we'll go ahead and put a semicolon there. Now inside of here, we're gonna to wanna to write some logic to basically either return back null, saying it's valid, or returning back something else saying it's not valid. So all we're gonna do is simply come into here and say return colors.length is equal to one, if that's true, return back null, meaning we found a color, so it's all valid. Otherwise, if we get back anything else, multiple or nothing, we'll say color name true, and that'll actually return back a, um, an actual object indicating what failed. It's kind of odd when you work with validators in Angular. It's like null means everything's cool, and then if you return back something else, something went wrong, which is kind of a little counterintuitive. So let's go ahead now and we'll save this. And then we're gonna come into here and we're gonna say npm start. And we'll fire up our Angular application. Give it a second to compile here. We'll open up the page in our web browser. So here's our color name. We'll open up our actual console here and go to the network tab. So you can kind of see what's going on here. So we need to reload that initially, we'll clear it. Okay, let's go ahead now and let's do some validation. So I'll type in B. Looks like I got a little error here. Cannot read property HTTP client of undefined. Let's see here. Ah, I put this. <laughs> it's an actual parameter there. Sorry about that. Come back over here and reload. Now we'll type it in. So we're gonna type in B, invalid color name. You can see where it made the request to the server blue and now it's valid but if you take out the e up oh, it's invalid now so you can see as we're typing into this it's actually going to be making calls up to the rest service now let's say we actually did have some local validation going on um, the asynchronous validation code is only called if all of the synchronous validators actually pass if any of the synchronous validators fail, it will not actually make the call up to the server to do the asynchronous validation. But there you go. Now we have the ability to check on the server to see if we have a valid color.